Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. This is Rito here playing a little bit of Terraria. We're gonna go ahead and start up our world. We've got Anna, and this is going to be a playthrough of Anna the Archer. We're gonna do some mods. Um, let's just show you really quickly what we've got as our mods for this Let's Play. Um, we're gonna be playing Calamity as the main mod, Alchemist NPC Light as a quality of life thing, same thing with Louis AFK, and we'll talk a little bit more about these as we go. And lastly, we've got Calamity Mod Music, which goes with Calamity and the Boss Checklist, which is just quality of life. So it's really just a Calamity Let's Play. We're not going to be putting too many other mods into this. So let's go with Medium on Expert and Corruption. And we'll call it Anna's World. So while this is loading, I just want to say thanks for tuning in and we've got Anna's world right here expert medium we're gonna go ahead and jump in for the first time and see what we got so this is Anna we've got her set up with a bow instead of a copper short sword um, and 99 arrows which start us off a little and then we've got a starter bag the iron heart which we are not going to use <laughs> you get permanently killed if you died during a boss and then we've got Revengeance, and there's a lot to talk about there, and the starter bag. So let's go ahead and use the starter bag to get this playthrough going. I'm going to switch this to so it's not auto-paused. And wow, it gives you a lot of stuff. So we got a copper bow, which is actually better than our wooden bow. A staff, really not... We got a... Mana Crystal, we'll go ahead and use that. I, I'm gonna, oh, well, Godly Slime Staff. I'm not gonna use Summons during this playthrough. So we'll kind of uh, put all this stuff in a treasure chest right here. I wanna go with Revengeance. So this makes it harder than Expert Mode and allows you to use what's called Rage and Adrenaline, which is a really awesome mechanic. We'll talk about that as we go in and it makes the game a lot harder. I'm not quite ready for a death mode playthrough, but I am ready to try the challenge of Revengeance. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that, and you see we've got Adrenaline, and we've got Adrenaline and Rage right up top. Those are super fun mechanics, so I'm, I'm really excited to play that. Okay, this is actually a really nice starting group of items. I'll, I always put gel in the ammunition section so I don't get rid of it by accident. And I'll put the chest in there. So we're ready to go. Already have a upgrade on our bow. Oh. First damage of the playthrough. So I've played Terraria probably for several several years. Maybe 2014 was when I started. Maybe 2013. I'm not quite sure. I actually started on console when they had a free to play. It was like with games with gold on Xbox. And it was really fun. I basically couldn't put it down. And then when 1.3 came out on the PC, I, I knew I had to switch to PC. I actually didn't have a PC at the time, um, but I made it happen and started playing 1.3 on PC, and it was just a blast. Um, my brother had an old computer that he was going to get rid of anyway, so that's what I ended up using, and it was just so much fun. And I haven't really been playing for the last year or so, because I haven't done any real big updates. But I've... Ooh, no! Killed the bunny by accident. I was shooting the slime, and I killed the bunny. Sorry, bunny. Uh, we got enough wood to probably press on. Usually, I don't like to just go ahead and build a base right off the bat. I like to just jump into exploration, see if I can find some tunnels and some treasure chests. Ooh, snow biome. I think I'm going to go the other way. PewDiePie's been putting out videos, and Happy Days has put out some live streams as well, which has really hyped me for playing Terraria again. So I forgot to mention, I've geared her up with only cosmetic items, the familiar wig, Chrono's breastplate, and Chrono's legs. That's just kind of gives her a cool look. Oh, this this is a Calamity monster. They're, I forget what they're called. They're a Wolfram. This mod adds lots of new enemies, tons of new items. Uh, it's got this rage and adrenaline mechanic, which you'll see as we go. And it gives a lot more difficulty to the game. It adds a ton of bosses, probably like 10 bosses or more to kill that guy. So these 
Wolfram shards are actually really useful. You can build a ranger set in, I mean, there's really not ranger sets you can get right in the, the beginning of the game, but this one is. So I think the first ranger set's the necro armor, but you can get a ranger set that will help boost the arrow damage. And we should find a treasure chest around here somewhere. I bet if we go down into this cave right here, we might find something. Sweet, we got an umbrella that will help keep us from getting fall damage. We'll switch out our mushroom healing to a lesser healing potion. And let's put this umbrella up here, just in case I need to switch to it if I'm falling. Okay, not really much else. I'll take this treasure and see. This actually looks like it goes down, so let's see how far this, this goes. The rules I'm thinking for this playthrough are Obviously, we're going to be using the bow, and I said before, we won't be using summons. The goal is to kill Supreme Calamitous on Revengeance mode. Do you hear that? The song just changed to the nighttime song. So we're starting our first night, and we're safe underground. Well, kind of safe. <laughs> Digging a mineshaft is pretty safe. But this means we don't have to deal with any zombies. Unless we die, then we'll be stuck up top, which will not be a good position to be. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the luck. So what I just saw when I flashed that torch is a shrine. Okay, so the Calamity mod adds shrines to the game. They're random, pretty rare, and you can find them throughout the world. And they have items that are unique. And some of them are even hard mode items. This one right here, Arcane Trinket of Chi. After two seconds of standing still and not attacking, you gain a buff. Oh, I didn't think that guy could get up here. Oh, crud. <laughs> no, I was too distracted. Stop. Okay, that was scary. Um, we will block this in for now while we pick up this item. So you gain a buff. This buff boosts your damage and decreases your damage taken by 15%. It deactivates once you move or attack once. Huh, that is really interesting. I don't know how useful that is, but I will put it on because I've got nothing else. I've never actually used it, but I've seen people use the mod that let lets you do vein miner, I think is what it's called. It basically instantly mines whatever you're trying to mine. It's kind of a cool mod. I've not tried it, and I don't know if I want to. It's kind of something, if, if any of you think I should, let me know, but... Um, I, I may give it a shot, maybe off the video and just see if I like it. Okay, ooh, some amethyst here. It's actually a pretty good area to, to mine. We've got plenty of lead and amethyst. You know what, after mining for a few minutes, I think I will go ahead and just install the vein miner. Give that a shot, because that'll speed things up, and I want to keep things moving pretty quickly. I want this playthrough to have like a nice pace, maybe like every other episode, go for a boss, or even get it to every episode. I don't want to over prepare unless absolutely needed. I mean, we're in Revengeance, so we're definitely going to have to prepare quite a bit for every boss fight, but I don't want to go totally crazy with it. If I could, you know, beat the boss fight and have it be a challenge, I'd rather go that direction. But if I remember correctly about <laughs> this, you know, Revengeance mode, it was plenty challenging, even with kind of optimized gear and everything. But we'll just kind of see how it goes and adjust accordingly okay well we'll we've got five recall potions so we'll just use one of those and organize my inventory so what i'm going to do during this playthrough is usually i'll just cut out when i organize my inventory because that's not something that's too exciting so that's what it'll just be kind of the the habit to just cut out the inventory organizing and then when we craft i'll kind of show some of our key crafting things um, when we're making an upgraded weapon, all that sort of stuff, because that's always fun and rewarding to see, but sorting through inventory, not so much. Okay, so let's craft as many arrows as we can. That is great. Actually, we could probably craft a few more just so we don't ever have to worry about those. And we can do... I think we can do a furnace. Yep, let's throw a furnace down. Gotta break these rocks go with a furnace right there and we have enough I think for an anvil as well Put an anvil 
What are you doing? It's raining. Okay, so what else do we have to craft? We might be able to craft... We don't have enough Wolfram shards to craft a Wolfram bow, but I want to get one of those as soon as we can. Okay, I think... I think we're pretty much good. We'll deposit our gold, and I'll sort through the rest of this later. And we're a little low on wood, so we'll cut another tree down. Eh, we'll go with two. Sorry, Mr. Beast. We're cutting down trees. It's always such an exciting feeling to just run across the world for the first time on a new playthrough. Because you don't know what you're going to find, and it's just always new, always always fresh. That's, I think the reason why Terraria's got such replayability is the random world generation. Just like Minecraft and other games like that, it's just so fun to explore something for the first time and, and see what you're going to find. Um, I'll just kind of cap some of these. I usually cap these sort of water places, uh, little ponds and stuff, just so I don't have to deal with them every time I run through. This is, you know, small enough. It's not going to slow me down too much, so I'll skip that. It'd be nice to find... Ooh, we have a strange plant. That's good. Those sell for a decent amount when you get the... The die trader, I think, is who I give those to. But before making this video, I have I had to kind of do the whole learning process about how to use uh, screen capture software and how to get the audio working and all that sort of stuff. One of those things where it's like, I'm excited to play Terraria, but I have to learn all that stuff before I can play. So it really made me focus and learn it all because I was like, oh, I just want to start playing. But I knew if I didn't film it, I would regret it. And so I had to kind of keep myself from playing any Terraria until I figured out how to set up all this. Not like it's really that hard. It didn't take me much time, but you still have to kind of focus and get it all done. But now that it's working and I've done all my little test screen captures and everything, it feels great. I think I'll put a rope down just in case we're having trouble here. And YOLO. Oh no. <laughs> No, thank you. I'm not going to be eaten by piranhas in this. That's not going to be fun. Back to exploring. Yes, this is great. I love a cave entrance. And I think the ice blocks are actually really good for making the ice burn, frost burn arrows, which really come in handy for... Uh, the Eye of Cthulhu, so we'll go ahead and pick up those. I'm trying to use my axe to break these so I don't have to waste too many arrows, but this is looking like a really good cave. Keeping an eye out for traps, because that is probably the best way to die early game, is to get hit by a couple traps. One poison dart on Expert or Revengeance will take you down, pretty much. Oh, here's our dart trap. Like I said, Right when you get into the cavern layer, you start getting traps quite a bit. If you use some of these ropes, it just makes it easy to navigate. Because one of the things that kills you most of the time early game is when you've got enemies that are kind of surrounding you and you're stuck, don't have that mobility of a double jump or any hooks or anything like that. Especially when you... Ooh, another trap right there. Two traps, actually. So I think one of these was a boulder trap. Yeah, there should be a boulder right up there and then dart trap. I like having it zoomed in just because it, it's easier to see as a viewer. For me, it makes it easier to find all of the different, you know, traps and keeps me focused on what's right in front of me. Oh, that's not where I want to be. Marble biome can really kill you quickly. But when there's treasure, it's hard to resist. But I think I will resist for now because that's probably not going to end well for me. Ooh, <laughs> so right there is another good use of an umbrella. I just, I'm gonna wall myself in because otherwise I will die. <laughs> How's it going guys? Got a little ice bat and a, how do you even pronounce that? Whatever, a little skeleton in gladiator costume. No, thank you. 
I will get you when I'm a little bit more powerful. Or I will break a little hole and shoot you over and over, but that may take a while. Instead, let's see what else we got around here. Well, this is getting a bit treacherous. I can hear mobs making noises all around me. Come on, little bat. There we go. So there was a big monster. It looked like a like a wolf thing over there. I'm going to build some platforms to keep him off of me and shoot him from above because I have a feeling he'll do some pretty good damage if we go down there. Oh, I think he's actually stuck in there. Okay, before I hit him, I don't know if the knockback will make him get out of the little hole he's stuck in, but it doesn't look like it. Sweet. That's an easy bit of leather. So in Calamity, they've created recipes so that you can craft certain um, vanilla items or just normal terraria items. And what that means is like the ice gate, for example, it's one of those items that's really hard to find and you need it to get your lightning boots upgraded to the frost boots or whatever. Um, and that's one of the items that's always given me trouble when I do you know, normal terraria playthroughs. And so what you can do in Calamity is you can actually craft that with leather, ice, and uh, actually, let me let me throw on auto pause real quick and I should be able to just show you. So I'm gonna show you one feature. I've got a quick key that opens recipe browser. You can basically select an item and it will pull up all the different things you can craft using leather, for example. So I can craft feral claws and that's uh, with Calamity, it even says right beside it, it says recipe added by Calamity mod. And so it'll tell you, if you don't see that, you know that it's a vanilla or normal terraria item. So like those right there. You can, you can craft the guide voodoo doll with it. That's pretty cool. Water walking boots um, and the ice skates. Let's check day bloom. And you can see all of the potions that you can make with a day bloom. You don't really have that much as a base crafting material like ice blocks. Um, all the things you can make with ice blocks, like the biome blade. How cool is that? The icicle staff, frost bolt, cryo key. Very cool. Before you throw away something in Calamity, it's good to have this recipe browser so you can just quickly check, like, uh, is this actually a, is this weapon going to come in handy later? Because you never know. Like, if you get, like, the ice blade or something, will that be something that you can craft into a better sword later on? because um, they really like the tiered crafting system in this game um, with Calamity mode. I'm going to turn off auto pause. You know how you made like Terra Blade normally? They like doing that sort of thing and just continuing to upgrade the Terra Blade into this crazy cool item later on in the game. And that's one of the really fun things about the progression in Calamity. I'm just going to throw some bombs down here and try to... I'll make a sticky bomb and throw it right on that guy. There we go. Just make another one and kill those enemies. It may take a little bit of time to build some things to make sure that you stay safe in the early game, but it's really worth it. Dying over and over really takes a lot of time and it's easier just to continue where you're at, spend a little bit more time, be a little bit conservative, and then just keep progressing. But we've dug down a little bit and we've got our next cave entrance with a little pot right here for us. And pop another heal. I got hit a few times by an ice bat back there. And it looks like the regen in expert and revengeance mode is much lower than you'd normally get. So you don't really heal much unless you've got food equipped, which I do not have any food yet. Uh oh. What the heck was that? range proficiency what leveled up what does that even mean what mod is giving me a range proficiency i'll have to look into that so off to the right there you can see those two bats and there's a little door over there so it looks like we're going to find our first actual gold or in this case it's like a gold treasure chest but it's a frost treasure chest and wow it is going to make me work for this one there are so many bats. We'll, we'll just stick 
in this little safe spot and kill some of these. There we go. Ah, these guys are annoying. Oh no. Uh, that's a bummer. Okay, so what happened there was there's this block right there that was preventing me from running back. Um, I was able to walk up it, but I couldn't walk down, so kind of stuck me there, unfortunately. Okay, let's go ahead and deposit all of our stuff. So I'm going to go head back so we can get that treasure. Okay, and we're back to the house this time. The enemies have despawned. Oh, that's why. There's a trap there. That's why there were so many bats. I was wondering where they were coming from. So this red pressure plate was activating a bat trap and it was basically just producing a bunch of bats. Okay, that's kind of cool. Get that keg, and what do we got? We got a rapid snowball cannon and an ice mirror, nice. And some potions, Splunker, Dynamite, ooh, Dynamite's great. And these strong healing potions, teleport potion, that's great too. Don't know if this is the safest place to stand when there's bats all over, because that knockback, but a retreat in here. Oh no, is it gonna do it again? No! <laughs> it's those blocks! I'm gonna mine those two blocks next time I come down here and I will get back at those blocks. They lock you in, you can walk up, but you can't walk down. So I say we summit the mountain instead of going down into the cave because the enemies are a little bit easier on the surface and we still haven't seen what's on the other side. So it's a nice little mountain and we'll see what we got. More snow, nice. One thing that I learned this playthrough is this mini map, I've never noticed, but you can actually increase the size and decrease the size, which is surprising, but it's just one of those things. I just never really looked at it and clicked around on that. Wolfram slimes, yes, come to me. I want that loot, those shards are great. I think we just need a few more. This is actually a great, great spawn rate for these slimes. Ooh, yes, give me that loot, give me that loot. 15 gold. I'm gonna take this pot and I'm gonna go back to the spawn, put that gold away, cause that is pretty good amount of gold. We're taking our little umbrella down into the first cave that we entered on the right side of the map. See what we can find down here. One trick I like to do if I don't have any glow sticks on me, I'll just dig a little hole and throw some torches in. And it's basically like having a glow stick, but it takes a little bit longer, but it's it works in a pinch, you know? You know, now that we have a Spelunker potion on, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom all the way out so we can see the full map and it'll help us just kind of find if there's any hearts or if there's any treasure around here. Which, not seeing anything here, but it looks like there's a cave to that side, which I might just do a mining potion and head on over there. Well, we just dug down into this cavern and found our first heart. We need all the hearts we can get early on. Boom, life crystal. Very nice. Ooh, yes, we got another heart crystal. This is a great cave. Getting some cobwebs too, which we can go back and make some accessories and hopefully get a good roll, like a, f a plus four defense on those little strings. Uh, little yo-yo strings you can make with, oh my goodness, another heart crystal. Yes. Yeah, you need a loom and then a bunch of cobweb and you can build the string, yo-yo string accessory. Awesome heart crystals. 
Okay, now we've got three heart extra hearts. Well, we found a good amount of emerald here. This might be enough to make a hook. So let's mine all this up and see how much we've got. Well, we've just been mining along, picking up some gems and getting some ore. And it looks like we got another heart over here. And a skeleton merchant. Nice. Let's see what he's got. Shop with him. Ooh, he's got bombs. Buy as many of those as I got. Uh, I'll sell him some sapphire. Maybe, maybe some ruby. We'll just go ahead and sell him that. 71 bombs. I will take that over rubies any day. And I think that's about all I need from him right now. Plus, we got a skeleton coming our way. Oh, and a trap. This is treacherous. Wow. Two hearts. This is great. Oop. And lots of traps. I really want to defend these hearts. Break the pressure plates for good measure. You know, those pressure plates actually sell for a good amount too, so I'll probably sell them to the merchant and then we'll be good to go. Get some more bombs and then we will be moving so fast. I forget those skeletons can... Actually, I don't even need to worry about you, skeleton. Take that. <laughs> okay, that's easy. So, shop... And we will sell pressure plates, buy a few more bombs. Perfect. Got 200 health, lots of bombs. We're gonna be moving. Spider spawn, no! <laughs> Heal! <laughs> no, it's so dark! I can't see anything! Okay, torch, torch. Run, run, Anna, run. <laughs> wow, that got dangerous fast. I was all excited about that mine, then we saw those spiders come in, and I thought the spiders would only just climb on the background wall, but then they started climbing towards me right on the ground. I knew I had to run. So Terraria is not the only game I play. I play a lot of other games, and for the last while I've been playing a lot of Diablo 3 and Elder Scrolls Online. I'll probably be playing other games on this channel. It's not gonna be just like a strictly Terraria channel, but definitely gonna be doing my first Let's Play as Terraria and doing lots of Terraria stuff because we have 1.4 coming out, which was originally the 1.3.6 update, and now it's 1.4, and we've got that coming probably 2020 sometime, maybe first half 2020, we don't really know but I am super hyped for that. Is that a pressure plate? Yes, it is. You're not gonna get me boulders. I'm surprised I even saw that pressure plate. For some reason, I'm seeing these way more than I normally do. Do I wanna go up? Do I wanna go back to base? I think I'll throw a few more bombs, see what's down here. Make a little tunnel. But I've never filmed a Let's Play or really much gaming content. Back in the day, like I'm talking a long time ago, I don't wanna really date myself too much here, but back in Halo 2 days, um, that was like my game. And I did some like montages, you know, of Halo 2. And uh, then back when Halo 4, I was really into Halo 4 for a while and Destiny, which I still play Destiny. Did some montages and stuff for that, but um, I haven't, you know, really done any serious um like let's plays or anything like that just you know some fun little videos here and there Ooh, is that a shrine i see i see a shrine that's gonna be good just open up path to this treasure chest i to get this before that guy comes back Man, i keep doing that the onyx excavator key Summons a drill to drill through the whole world and destroy all the neat world generation with complete disregard for all creatures that inhabit this land. <laughs> um, what is this? What? I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to try that out. That sounds absolutely OP. Let's try it. 
Oh, no. <laughs> okay, that's totally broken. I don't know what this is from. It reminds me of... What's the game? It's uh, Starbound, I think. They had drill items there, too. Oh, another heart. We're getting so lucky with hearts. There it is. Wow, we were in a deep pit there. Okay, well, we just teleported back. I want to put up a little barricade around our house. Well, we've got some protection from all of the zombies and demon eyes outside tonight. I know we got enough for the emerald hook. We got those 18 emeralds and it only takes 15. So we've got an emerald hook. We'll equip that. And now I think we've got enough to make, yes, we do, a Wolfram bow. Let's make one of those for sure. And it's agile. It's a good affix to increase speed. Okay, let's make a platinum bow. And then maybe let's go ahead and make a platinum pickaxe as well. So we can upgrade, toss that copper pickaxe, put our platinum pickaxe here. And we got a platinum bow and a Wolfram bow. So we'll go ahead and uh, toss this copper one as well. And then we might have enough to make the Wolfram headgear. Increase 3% increased range damage. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. And we'll equip that instead of our wood helmet. Go ahead and just toss the wood helmet. And we've got our hook. Oh, it feels so good. We're gonna be moving now. Between next episode, what I'm thinking of doing is bringing in a floating castle that I had built in one of my other playthroughs. I really love the castle. It's one of my favorite builds I've ever done. In the past, I believe T-Edit would break modded worlds because it would destroy the abyss biome and some of the other biomes, but it seems to be fixed. I did a trial of it earlier today to make sure that we had the ability to import something into a world and it looked like it worked. So what I'm gonna do is just right above this, this little makeshift base that I made, I'm gonna import that. I'm gonna remove all the treasure chests pull out all of the crafting stations, all that sort of stuff. So it's just a completely clear, empty base where the NPCs can move in and it'll look really cool. And what I'm kind of thinking of doing is adding some stuff as we go through the playthrough, adding like maybe a trophy room and a shrine, different things. So we'll still be doing some building, but we'll have a cool base to start with. So that's what I'm thinking of doing. Um, I'll also sort all the inventory and kind of get things ready to go for the next episode. I'm so excited. This is really fun and I'm really glad y'all tuned in. Um, I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you want to catch the next episode.